قل لو كان البحر ميدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا uh, This verse that we read in Surah Al-Kahf that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Say if the ocean were all ink and the trees, the trees were used as pens, it still would not suffice to write the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, the oceans would run out of ink before the words of my Lord, and even if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought another ocean for its aid. So what this teaches us is that there is no way that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that everything that Allah does, that everything about Allah and the words of Allah could be contained within ink. And in fact, an Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he says something very interesting. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to write down his knowledge. He didn't need to have a qalam, a pen, to write down, you know, in a lawh al-mahfuz, in the tablet, because it's all contained within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge anyway. But he said, in that is an ishara, in that is a sign that Allah is showing us the importance of writing. Allah is teaching us about the gift of writing and the importance of writing. And this is, this is clearly consistent with the Qur'an, because Allah actually swore by the qalam, right? There's Surah Al-Qalam, Allah swore by the pen, and it shows the greatness of the pen in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the pen is a means of preserving knowledge. It's a means of passing it on to future generations, right? It's, it's a means of, of, uh, of, of documenting so many things that can be used for the benefit of mankind for years and years to come. And we see this rich tradition that we have in our own Islamic history of students of knowledge and scholars that have contributed to every single field. Their works are still being used. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He honors the pen and He and He talks about the blessing of the pen by swearing by the pen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even causes the angels to preserve all of our actions through the use of a pen. And we find that in the very in the first revelation to the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra, right? Read. And so the first command is to read. Soon after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, read and your Lord is most generous, alladhi allama bil qalam, the one who taught by the pen. So he taught the use of the pen. So not only does it clearly allude to the ni'mah being mentioned here, the blessing of writing being mentioned here, and the generosity of Allah, of allowing us to learn how to write and to use the pen, but it shows us that right after read comes the pen, right? Read and then write. And th this is very interesting because al-ilm al-maktub, uh, written knowledge, which is what the scholars say Allah is talking about when He says noon wal qalam, and He swears by the pen. Uh, Qatada, rahimahullah, He said that the pen is far more powerful than the sword, which is why Allah never swears by a sword. There is no part of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the sword because the pen is far more powerful. With the pen, peace and tranquility is established or wars are started, right? It starts off with, with, with writing, right? Da'wah is made or da'wah is destroyed by the use of the pen, right? And Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah, he said, with the pen, religion is established, wills are written down, testimonies are preserved, minds are enlightened. The pen is far more powerful of a tool than a sword or anything else, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a point to swear by it and remind us of the blessing that He bestowed upon us with the ability to write. And you know, there's a very famous uh, weak hadith, and it is weak in hadith form, that midad uh, al-ulama afdalu min dam al-shuhada, that uh, the ink of the scholars is far more sacred than the blood of the martyrs. Although it's weak in hadith form, the statement is a statement of Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, as was narrated by Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah ta'ala, that surely the, the, the ink of the scholar is far more sacred and far more precious in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the blood of the martyrs. Why? Because again, the ink is what starts it all off, the pen is what gets everything going. We find Salahuddin rahimahullah ta'ala, the great scholar, his, his revolution truly starts by writing letters throughout the Muslim world. That's, that's how he starts uniting the people and bringing the people around this wonderful cause that he had that we still praise until today. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Badr, what did he ransom prisoners for, right? Someone who would have the ability to teach 10 people how to read and write. Uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, who is obviously amongst the companions, the one who narrates the most ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the most sayings of the Messenger ﷺ. He praises Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu, who used to have a sahifa to sadiqa the truthful tablet, where he would go and he would write down everything the Prophet ﷺ said. 
So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he praised Abdullah ibn Amr. He said that he used to write and I didn't used to write. Meaning there's something special about what he used to do and this is something to, you know, for, for, this is something to praise him for. And you know, a lot of times as, as a teacher, as a, an instructor, if I see people, even in a halaqa, even if I see them in a conference or a convention, uh, not writing, not taking notes, it's pretty demoralizing as a teacher because it's like, are they really benefiting from what I'm saying? Or are they just, uh, from what I'm saying, are they really just trying to entertain themselves and hear the next joke or hear the next cool story? And I always look for those people that are taking notes and I focus on them. And, and Imam Hassan al Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, he once said that someone who attends a learning circle without a, a board and a pen, meaning a pen and paper, uh, is in the same situation as a man who goes to battle without a weapon, right? You have to have a pen, you have to be taking notes. And you know, this is, this is extremely important with whatever you're learning to trap your knowledge and capture it with that pen because you never know when you'll be able to go back and benefit from it. Not all of us are, in fact, none of us are at Imam al-Bukhari or Imam al-Shafi'i where we can memorize hundreds and thousands of pages, uh, you know, without, without any uh, use of anything. Uh, and Yahya bin Ma'in rahimahullah ta'ala, he actually said that if I see a person uh, going to the circles of hadith without a pen, then I automatically class him as a narrator that you can't accept from, right? Because Bukhari is an exception, a Shafi'i is an exception. Otherwise, you've got to have a pen. Uh, Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, if you look at him, and this is a man who authored books between Dhuhr and Asr that are used as textbooks for universities in theology. Right? This is a man who used to love to write. And subhanAllah, the way that he was punished in prison was that his ink was taken away from him. And even then, he continued to pen letters using his blood because of the blessing and the value of ink. And this is a tradition and a legacy from our ulama. And for that reason, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that upon everyone who owns an inkstand or has a pen is the favor of Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. In essence, telling us that we all owe a Shafi'i for what he taught us of the use of the pen as well, and how he made it a point to always be walking around, taking notes from the scholars, benefiting in every way. And this is something that we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the use of the pen. And the greatest way you thank Allah is by using the blessing that he gave to you in a way that's pleasing to him.